him before, you're about to. He comes from, I like it when he jokes about to, uh, or at least he used to joke about to forgive his English accent, but actually it's called English. We're not English and uh, we're American, so we got American accents, so actually he needs to forgive all of us of our different various accents. So Brother Graham, please come on up here. Thank you. Um, just have your way, brother. Yeah, thank you. Wow, good morning. How is everybody? Good. What English accent? <laughs> In heaven, everybody talks this way. <laughs> I'm actually a missionary. God has sent me to teach you how to talk. And <laughs> Repeat after me, tomato. <laughs> and uh, what else can we do? <laughs> Petrol, not gas. <laughs> Actually, I'm an American. I became an American last year, so yes. And, uh, and I won't break out into song, but I'm, come on, I'm proud to be an American. But at least I know I'm free. <laughs> I guess I'm actually an Anglo-American. We're a small minority. Um, I hope to be, we hope to have representation on the Supreme Court soon. And... Uh, <laughs> We're a tiny minority here, but we have a cute accent and we can play real soccer, so, you know. <laughs> hey, it is great to be here with you, you chaps, you folks this morning, it really is. And uh, send our love to Pastor Daryl and Francine. And uh, in fact, can we pray for them? Can I, I know many of you know this, but it's, it's hard being a pastor. Everybody wants to be a prophet, nobody wants to be a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, prophets come in and like, go, just says the Lord and leave. And, uh, and uh, I, you know, it's really funny, but until I was a pastor, seriously, I, this, sometimes pastors accumulate pain, other people's pain. And I, I've done that at times where, I, serious, true story, about a few years ago, I nearly had a breakdown. I'm not being cute saying that, and I know some of you may know what that is. I nearly had a nervous breakdown, and I, I realized what was happening as a pastor. I would bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill. I would go to somebody and take their burden off them, and then I'd keep it. And I'm, I'm big, I've got strong faith, I was okay, and then another. It was like I was going around, and I'll give these back, honestly. But, and uh, go on, and... And <laughs> that's a really cute one. Another one, and uh, you, you, you get the point. <laughs> we try and give the right one back. <laughs> but, uh, and after a while, I was at a near collapse point. I'm like, God, what, what is it? I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I love you. I'm still doing the same things. And I actually had to realize that I wasn't the savior of the world. That mm-hmm. I was a shepherd. I, I was a good shepherd, but I wasn't the good shepherd. The Bible says, bear one another's burdens, but then it says, cast your care on him, for he cares for you. And I, I have to do that daily bl- discipline of helping other people and then saying, Jesus, you've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and passing it on. But uh, I tell you guys, I really mean that. Pray, pray for your pastors, and I say that for wives, husbands, you know, together as a couple. But, uh, you know, Satan loves to, Satan loves to, the Bible says they strike the shepherd and the sheep scatter. Yes. Yes. And Satan's not dumb in some ways, and he knows if he can attack a pastor, he, he, he gets a lot of benefit from it. So, uh, Lord, we, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Darrell and Francine. I thank you uh, for the church. Uh, I thank you. I met this church when it started in the hotel up in Vestal. Thank you for faithful people. Thank you for those faithful in season, out of season. Thank you though for those who show up, who give, who serve, who invite, who love, who pray. And Lord, we just bless Pastor Darrell and Francine today. Let them have a wonderful trip. Just the blessing of God upon them that makes the rich and brings no sorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. Well, I like I said, it's wonderful to be here with you today. If you would turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to speak to you today. Turn to the other neighbor and say he's going to use an English accent. (laughs) It's terrible. (laughs) I blame you for this. (laughs) But um, 
Hey, if you haven't heard me, I, I apologize in advance. I used to be a great preacher when I was young and God set me free. <laughs> I really mean that. I, I figured out God was so good that I didn't need to hype him or, or be, you know, this super duper preacher. It's all about trusting his word. Amen. And I, I love taking God at his word. When the church acts as if the Bible is true, God will act as if the Bible is true. And I say that lovingly, and I know I'm, I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir here, but the problem in America is we've learned to do church without God. If God went on vacation for a month, most churches wouldn't even notice. Because we've kind of figured out how to do this all on our own. And I believe, I believe we're living in the last days, but I believe in the last days, God is not going to show the world what the church can do. He's going to show the world what the church can't do, what nobody can do, and what he alone can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. The world has seen what we can do, and they're not terribly impressed. But I believe they're about to see what God can do. Amen. And God wants, I believe the Lord wants to bring the church out into a place in our flesh, it looks like a place of risk because we have not, it's like walking on water. We don't have anything under our feet. But actually, it's about absolute certainty, the certainty of walking on his word. And I believe the Lord is raising up a, a new generation. They can be nine months or 99. It doesn't matter about age, but a generation of people who lean not on their own understanding who will acknowledge him in all the ways, who lean on God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus comes to you and I like he, he always has done, and he says, follow me. And if you're like I am, we, I like to say, where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody, follow me, and like, where to? <laughs> And I don't know about you, but I, in my experience, Jesus likes to put on a, a cheeky smile and say, I'm not telling you. <laughs> and then it gets worse. He says, close your eyes and follow me. <laughs> Where's that in the Bible? We walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> yeah? And I, I believe God wants us to live, it, this sounds like a contradiction in a way, but in a place of, of circumstantial insecurity, but relational security. Amen. That makes sense? Yeah. God doesn't want me to be secure because all oh, the bills are paid and everybody likes me and I like the government. And I don't, you know, just I, everything is, is, all my circumstances are lined up. Rather, God wants me to be secure in who He is. Not even in the fact that I've worked out every single thing He's doing. Yeah? God doesn't want you to work him out. <laughs> We've, have, how many of you have tried? God is not logical. He's wise. Yes, he is. Mm. Let me say that again. God's not logical. The only time God's logical is when you're in sin. And he says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be red as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. What, once you're washed in the blood, God, God doesn't want to teach you about human logic. He wants to teach you heaven's wisdom. That's a really good point right now. <laughs> so guys, I, I don't want to be too long today. I actually want to spend a lot of time praying for the sick today. Could we do that? And what I want to do this morning, uh, briefly, I want to talk about God's healing power. And I know that many of you know about that. Maybe you know more about it than I do. You believe in that. But would you agree that we need to keep, there are some things we need to keep rehearing again and again and again. And I have been, uh, I've been pray praying for the sick or ministering to the sick since the mid-1980s. I love healing. I've seen thousands and thousands of people healed and, and you know, glory to God. But, but I'm in a season where I feel the Lord saying, Graham, go for it like never before. The world needs to see the healing power of God. Yes. Everywhere, in church, in Walmart. Come on, in Washington, in Wilmington, or whatever, you know, everywhere we go. I believe God wants, I believe Jesus came and Jesus said to the world, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He came to show the world the Father. And then he said to the disciples, as the Father sent me, so I send you. What's our mission? Our mission is to go into the world and say, when you've seen us, 
you've seen Jesus. How's it going for you? And I believe the Lord is coming back for a church that I don't think he's coming back for a church that looks like the church in the book of Acts. I think he's coming back for a church that looks like him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you remember when God made, you know, made Adam and then he took Eve out of Adam, if you will. And before, before Eve was there, God brought all of the animals in front of Adam to see if he could find a help me to mate. And poor Adam's looking at the elephant, <laughs> giraffe, whoa, and some bug, you know, and like, no, no, next, next. <laughs> and literally, you know, in the Hebrew, when, when Adam sees Eve, if you will, he's like, he's like, this is it. Come on, have you remember when you met your husband or wife? Or, you guys are gonna make me work hard today, aren't you? <laughs> I'm preaching to you. <laughs> It's like Adam says, man, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. Bone of my bone, flesh of my... This is the perfect counterpart to me. Do you know Jesus is coming back for a bride? He's not coming back for a ragtag bunch of people hiding in the basement with tribulation freeze-dried food. Terrified of the world, complaining about their little boo-boos all the time. He's coming back for a bride that looks like him and that, he, that, that we're going to a marriage. Hallelujah. And I believe there's a, in one way, God only has one call on your life and mine, that we will be conformed into the image of his son. In the spirit, it's already happened. You've been reborn in his image, but the Lord wants who we are in heavenly places to be actually our testimony, our reality for who we are right now here on the earth. God doesn't want me to simply say, I'm righteous in heavenly places. He wants me to live righteous here on the earth. He wants to, he says, don't be squeezed, formed, conformed by the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And there's a, Hallelujah, a journey of transformation the church is on so that we become like Jesus. And that means his character, his love, but it also means his power. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So for many of you today, what I'm gonna share, I'm sure it will just be a confirmation and encouragement of what you know. But I've learned that if I really know something, when I hear it again, it feeds me. I have heard people preach on faith for years, but every time I, if I hear Kenneth Hagin just read a Bible, read, he could read the index. I'm like, yes, come on. This is a new pulpit. <laughs> Pastor Darrell will not be happy if I destroy it while he's away. <laughs> yeah, come on. So if you have a Bible today, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. And I, I want to show you the, the easiest way I know to get healed. Yeah? And I, I want to just, let me put that out there really simply. I believe God's going to heal lots of people today in this room. Amen. Not because I'm here, but because the Word of God is here. The Word and the Spirit are here. Let me say that again. God's going to heal people. I don't mean in some maybe sort of-ish way. I mean people testifying they got healed. It should take courage to preach the Bible. Yeah? God doesn't want us to say, well, maybe this might happen or could happen or you never know what God will. I know exactly what God's going to do. God will do what he said he will do in his word. Hallelujah. And I believe that he's already committed by his word and he wants you and I to commit ourselves to that word. Glory. <laughs> Hey, if you, uh, I, I forgot to say, by the way, but I've got some uh, teaching material at the back. Take a look at that on your way out, if you will. That's my sleazy ad. <laughs> and, uh, and if anybody's ever interested in coming on a missions trip, I'll be taking a, a team to Ireland in about three weeks' time and uh, just a week of revival in Ireland. That, that trip's full, but I'll be doing one to Wales and England in the fall. So if you... If you ever want to come on a faith missions trip, uh, grab one of my cards at the back. And You know, I've never seen one person who wanted to go on a missions trip who God didn't pay all the bills. Never one. Sometimes you just need to take a little step of faith. Yeah? Good. 
Hey, can we, just before we, we turn to the scriptures, I want to do one thing right now. I just want to show us God's here. In the, how many of you know the Lord's here? Right, real quick, I want to pray for anybody in pain or discomfort right now. So just take a minute and give your body the MRI. Come on, where do you need healing right now? Yeah? Just, just take a moment. If you will, close your eyes for a sec. Put your hand on any part of your body that's in pain or discomfort right now that you need healing in. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, I believe I've already preached enough of your word to see everybody in this room healed right now. <laughs> but Lord, I ask that right now you'll come and confirm your word all over this room right now. That you'll walk up and down these rows and touch people. Lord, I speak to sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, any spirit of infirmity. I bind every bit of sickness and tell it to go in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I just release the balm of Gilead right now, the, 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 the oil of your spirit. I tell nerve endings to, to, to calm, to be at peace, pain to go, and we believe we receive healing all over the room right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, can, if you will, just for one second, forget about your body and say thank you. Just begin to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good. Hey, I want to check on that in five minutes. But uh, Hebrews chapter, how many of you love, love the book of Hebrews? Yes. Hebrews 11 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. How many of you know what Hebrews 11 is about? Faith. Faith. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 1 says now. Do you know, whenever we talk about faith, we talk about now. I've noticed that Satan, that Satan doesn't mind you believing in God. Satan is the God of distance and the God of delay. He always wants God to be far away or a long time in the past or the future. A long time ago in a galaxy. Just, just check it. And, and God is a God of the here and the now. When, when I was young, people sold me the, I was told many, many times that God does amazing miracles in Africa and India. So I went to India. I figured it was further. God must really do lots of miracles there. And I, I discovered an amazing thing. I, I did meeting after meeting in India and nobody got healed. I remember after a week being really frustrated and going to the Lord and saying, Lord, it's easier to heal people in France than India. I used to live in France. And uh, I suddenly got this revelation why, it's, why God does great miracles in Africa and India. Because we believe that God does great miracles in Africa and India. And we go around telling ourselves, you know, God never heals in America. Would you pray the prayer of agreement with me? Yes, we just agree that this, <laughs> but God does great miracles. God does great miracles in Pennsylvania or in Massachusetts or whatever, but never in New And we say it so much that we end up believing it. And the reason God does great miracles over in some countries is not because he likes them more. It's because we believe it. Satan sold us a lie, told us that two and two makes five, and we believe it and we act as if it's true. And I tell you, one of the lies that Satan wants to get, to perpetuate, to spread in the church is the lie that God used to do things in the past and he will do things in the future, but he's not doing things right now. Hebrews 11 wants us, now faith is. When Jesus came to the tomb of, tomb of uh, Lazarus in John 11, Lazarus had two sisters, Martha and Mary. One sister said, Lord, if you would have been here, you could have healed him. The other sister said, I know he'll rise on the last day. One was looking backwards, the other's looking forward. And in John eleven forty, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Come on, I tell you, God is your savior today. If you come into this room or somebody's drag, drug you here, drugged you here. <laughs> I'm okay. You bring him any which way you can. <laughs> Kicking and screaming if need. Lock the doors, okay? <laughs> if you're here today and you need saving, I've got good news. Jesus is a savior now. You don't have to wait. He's in a good mood right now. You don't have to wait 20 years. He will save you today. 
If you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I, I love Pentecostals, but you don't need to tarry. They needed to tarry before the day of Pentecost. Post-Pentecost, we need to receive. You don't need to wait, you simply need to receive. And if you need healing, I've got some wonderful news for you today. Jesus is your healer right here, right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. It says in the next verse, says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And then it goes all the way through Hebrews 11, these great heroes of faith. By faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abraham left his father's house. By faith, Isaac and Jacob. By faith, Joseph prophesied. By faith, you know, Elijah, Joshua, Samson, on and on. And then Hebrews 12 talks about you and I. Wouldn't you have liked to have been in one of the I would like to be in Hebrews 11. Yeah. I wish my name was a by faith, Graham. <laughs> Whatever. It's too late. The book is closed. Or is it? Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Therefore, we also, say we also. We also. Come on, we, we, we all, this is speaking to you and I. List all these great heroes, not so we can simply admire them, but so we can join them. We also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> hey, real quick, a few minutes ago, we prayed for people in pain. Check your body. Have a look. Touch, move. Boom, boom, boom. I, I've learned that when we pray, we should expect something to happen. No matter. So let me ask, like over the last, whatever that was, five or ten minutes, how many people have been healed or the pain's gone down? Would you raise your hand? Just raise it up high, don't we, Shu? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we give glory to God for seven? Bless you, Jesus. Come on, the Lord's here. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can, you can measure your faith by measuring how willing you are to look stupid if nothing happened. That's worth writing now. Develop a lifestyle where every day we're going to look really stupid if God breaks his word. It'll never happen. Come on, that's, I said God wants us to live on the edge where we, we always can sink if he, his word doesn't hold us as we walk on water. Amen? Mm. I don't even want to say that. <laughs> I said, God wants us to walk in such a way, like Peter walking on water, where if his word doesn't hold us up, we're going to sink. What we like to do is we want to build a safe lifestyle where there's no risk, there's no danger. And we can do that. The problem is there's no miracles. Yeah, and God wants us to live out there on the edge where there's nothing under our feet except this. How many of you know this is the surest thing on planet Earth? Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. Amen. Come on, real quick today, I want to give you three words that I believe is the greatest key to getting healed. And we read it there. It says we're surrounded by this great cloud of wonderful witnesses, but now it's our turn. Let us run our race with endurance, perseverance. And then it says, looking unto Jesus. Say that with me, looking unto Jesus. How do you get healed? It's easy, you look at Jesus. This is so simple, somebody may be offended by this, but you know, you don't need to read 100 books on healing, you need to look at Jesus. How do you get faith? You know, you don't get faith by trying to get faith. Has anybody ever tried to work up their faith? 
I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. <laughs> no, I don't, oh God. I <laughs> yeah, I remember years ago when I, was a, when I was a teenager, I used to know everything. <laughs> Sorry, teenagers, it's a, it's a British thing, but uh, uh, no, I, I remember preaching when I'm about 19, a wonderful sermon, and my sermon basically had one point. Because by his stripes we are healed, every single Christian should live in perfect health all of the time. It went over well that day as well. <laughs> you know, I, I still believe in that as a theological position. I just realized that at times people, including me, need some help to get there. And that simply coming with this troop and clobbering people over the head with it like a mallet is not fun. And I preach this wonderful sermon. Every Christian should be in perfect health all of their lives because by his stripes we're healed. <laughs> The next day, I woke up sick as a dog. Oh, my toenails hurt, my hair hurt, everything hurt. Yeah, and oh, it's just, you know, have you ever just woke up and oh, you want to go back to bed and try again? And all I could say was, oh God. And I felt, I, yeah, that's biblical. I felt like the Lord was laughing at me. Psalm 2 says, he who sits in the heaven laughs. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's like the Lord was saying, Graham, you preached it yesterday, you can enjoy it today. <laughs> and everything in me hurt. And I, I kind of dragged myself, drugged myself out of bed. <laughs> and I walked up and down my floor for about three hours saying, by your stripes, I am healed. 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 And after about three or four hours of vain repetition, the Lord spoke to me and he said, do you believe that by my stripes you were healed? And I didn't say it, but I really wanted to, what do you think I'm doing? Of course I really. <laughs> and it's really, you know, the, Lord, the Lord's so gracious. He said to me, the very reason you're doing that shows me you don't believe that. Listen to what he said to me. If you believe that by my stripes you were healed, why are you trying to get healed? And I suddenly realized, I thought I was building, what I was doing was striving. And something went from my head to my heart and I got instantly healed. Now don't mishear me, it's a wonder. I walk up and down the floor every day speaking scripture. What I've learned though is I'm not doing it like a magic trick to get God to do things. I'm not trying to change God, I'm trying to change Graham. <laughs> Confessing scripture doesn't do anything for God. I'm the Lord, I change not. It's not like God, if you keep putting coins in the machine and eventually God will do it. You and I are the one that need to change. So it's wonderful to walk and speak scripture and you're, you're changing your heart. Psalm 119, 89 says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. That's not our problem. Our problem is just right here. And the answer is right here and right here and right here and right here. When we speak scripture, we're not talking God, getting God into a good mood. God's already in a good mood. What we're doing is realigning our heart. But it's so easy to get into this thing where we're striving and trying and getting frustrated when it's not working. Have any of you ever done that? Is it just me? Come on, I, it's just, I'm feeling that spirit of slap. <laughs> just me. Just in case you ever get this way, let me help you. <laughs> I, I've learned though, there's something incredibly powerful about looking unto Jesus. You know, unless you're cross-eyed, frankly, you can't look at two places at the same time. Uh, Luke 11, 34 says, when your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. And the problem for most of us, come on, I'm joking, but when we're sick, we're, we're looking at Jesus and then we're looking at the pain in our foot. Yeah. We're looking at this and then we're looking at the CNN. Oh, God, don't do that. You know, we're looking at this and we're looking at the doctor's report. We're looking at this and then we're looking, or we're looking at the preacher, or we're looking at this method or that method or this thing or that thing. And I believe you don't get faith looking at your problem. You get faith looking at unto Jesus. 
Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Come on, finish it. The things on earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And so often what we're doing is we're coming and saying, Lord, look at the things on earth, change the things on earth, change the doctor's report, change the symptom in my body, change this thing, change that thing. And faith is to look away from one thing and look at Jesus. And it doesn't mean to give a little glance at Jesus. I've seen him, that's, no, it means to look and to look and to look and to look. Hallelujah. I would suggest to you, if you look in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus went around ministering, he actually didn't try to pump up faith. He would preach and teach the word. And somebody would come to him, and he, he said again and again, look at me. Peter and John come to the gate, beautiful. Silver and gold, have we not? He, they said to the man, the, the man uh, crippled there at the gate, beautiful, look at us. And I believe God wants us to look at him, look away from our problem and look at him. Amen. And I, I won't have the time to do that today, but it's, it's in every book of the Bible, that simple principle. In Numbers 21, the children of Israel have left Egypt and they're, they're sick of the desert. They want to go back to Egypt. Does anybody remember Keith Green, the singer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> he, he once wrote a song, so you want to go back to Egypt. And, uh, and the people of Israel were remembering. They were playing that wasn't it good back in the old country game. There was garlic and there was onions and Egyptian falafel. And what are we doing here eating manna every day? And uh, they complained against God and against Moses. So because of their sin, the Lord allowed snakes to enter the camp. And they bit many of the children of Israel. And many of them died. Yeah. And then the people repented. They came to Moses and they said... We messed it up again. We've sinned. Ask God to forgive us. And can you imagine thousands of people suffering from snake bites? Yeah? If you've been bitten by a snake, a snake's usually going to bite your leg, you know, your arm, your hand, your elbow. It's like an extremity of your body. And that, that would cause the limb, whatever, to swell. They come to Moses in pain, swollen leg maybe, saying, help. And the Lord told Moses to do a strange thing. The Lord told Moses, make a brass serpent, a brass snake, put it on a stick and hold it above the, the camp of Israel. And then he said, everyone who looks at the snake on the stick, not, not who looks at it once and walks away, but who looks and looks and looks and looks and looks, will be healed. Now again, you couldn't keep looking at your foot, looking up at that. You had to take your eye off your swollen leg and put your eye on the serpent on the pole. And the Bible says everyone who looked, everyone was healed. Hallelujah. Now today, I don't have a snake on a pole with me. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. Yeah. Does anybody know John 3.16? Anybody know John 3.14? John 3.14 says, As Moses raised up the serpent in the wilderness, so must I, the Son of Man, be lifted up. In the same way, for the same reason, as Moses in the old term lifted that snake up, Jesus was high and lifted up on the cross. And I tell you guys, that's the answer to receiving healing for everybody in this room, for anybody watching this broadcast, it's not look at Graham, look at Pastor Darrell, look at Benny Hinn, look at whoever. God bless those people. They're, they're just servants. They're like the waiters in the restaurant that help you, you know, enjoy that thing. But they're not the meal. They're the ministers, the servants. Jesus is the meal. And the answer to everything is to look at Jesus on the cross. Come on, he took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. And by his stripes, we were healed. Yes. And all the way through the Bible, come on, Moses arrives at the Red Sea and he's looking at the, this, the water in front of him, the Egyptians behind him, an unbelieving crowd of Israelites. And the Bible says that Moses lifted up his eyes and said, God, help. Yeah. Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles 20, he... Um, 
He prayed and he said, Lord, we're being attacked from three different directions. He said, We've, there's no might, there's no power in our hand and we don't know what to do. But our eye is on you. Jesus, you know, stood in front of 5,000 hungry people. <laughs> 12 unbelieving disciples and a little boy with a happy meal. <laughs> the Bible says he took the loaves and fish, he broke bread and he looked up. He's like, heaven, and I believe we need to learn to look up. Yes. To look up. Can I, I don't want to sound anti-American. I'm an American, okay, so. You know, so many good things about this nation. Can I mention one bad thing? I think it's part of our health care system or the advertising thing, but there's such a faith and the, the message is passed that at a certain age you're going to get this condition, that condition, another condition. You're going to get diabetes, you're going to go blind, you're going to get arthritis, you're going to be. Blah, blah, blah. It, it's, we get washed in it all the time. Yeah. And it's, I'm not against doctors and medication or any of those things, but it's like you can't put the TV on or the internet without being told you're this age, you should expect to have this and expect to have that, and it's going to be miserable. And da, 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 da. Oh, but we've got a pill to sell you, and uh, you know, just. And I'm not against any of, thank God for doctors and medicine and all those things. But I, I think at times we develop faith that things are going to go wrong. Yes. And we start really young. Yes. I hope there's no doctors here. <laughs> I'm kidding. Come and give me a hug afterwards. But uh, can I, I mean, we, we read it earlier. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let's not forget his benefits. He forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. He crowns my life with loving kindness, tenderness, satisfies my mouth with good things, so my youth is renewed as the eagle. I tell you guys, it's never too late to start saying, I'm going to live a long, healthy life. I'm going to go home with a good, healthy body. I'm never going to have cancer. Well, Graham, you shouldn't say that. Maybe say, no, I'm, I said, let me say, I'm never going to have cancer, Amen. never going to have diabetes, never going to do. Amen. I'm, not, I'm not beating up on anybody. I'm saying, let's begin to develop our faith. Yes. Let's say our kids are going to be healthy. Yes. Come on, grandparents, you be the prophet. Stand over your family every day even when they're not there and speak life and health over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And I think at times we just end up repeating the things we've heard and, you know, you get a little paid, oh, it's got to be this. And, you know, you go to the gym, lift it, oh, it's oh, pain in my heart, oh, and the fear comes. And, uh, you know, be wise, be healthy, amen. The Bible says the tongue of the righteous, that's you and I, is a tree of life. It says the tongue of righteous is health. And we should be the prophet over our own life. I don't get up and wonder, what kind of day will I have today? I get up and tell my day, here's what kind of day we're going to have today. Yeah, get up and, and decree. You will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Hallelujah. That was free. But <laughs> Come on, I, I don't want to, I can go on and on. Peter. Steps out of the boat, Matthew 14. He walks on water, amen. But what he really does is walk upon the word of God. Yeah. Come, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. That one word, come, was enough to support Peter. And Peter's walking on water, walking on the word, walking to Jesus. His eye is on Jesus when suddenly he takes his eye off of Jesus and puts them on the wind and the waves and the billows. Can I suggest to you, it's not even, is it logical? Are there good days to walk on water and bad days to walk on water? Does it get easier if the weather's really calm? It's stupid, isn't it? You know, if you're going to walk in the supernatural, there's never a good day to walk in the supernatural. And yet, our flesh thinks that way. And what happens is Peter takes his eye off of Jesus and puts his eye on the wind and the waves and the big wave coming and all that. And he gets that sinking feeling. And glug, 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 down he begins to go. Yeah. How do we receive from God? Keep your eye on Jesus. Yes. Keep looking at him. Look at him. Look at him. You say, Graham, I've tried that. Just don't give up. Yes. Keep looking at Jesus. You know, if, if we've taken our eye off him, put your eye back on him today. Yes. 
wake up every day and say, Lord, you are my healer. Thank God for doctors, nurses, medication, nothing against all of those. Thank God for ministries in the body of Christ, books and conferences and, you know, a, a good ch- all of those things, amen. But my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you and I'm not taking my eye off of you. Yeah. I've, I've discovered that when we'll do that, what we, whatever you look at begins to flood your heart. Whatever you put your focus on begins to fill you until it consumes you. There's a story of a young guy in France or I, I, where he used to live and he uh, had to go away for two years and do his military service. And he was in love with this young lady. And before he left, he said, every day I'm going to write you a letter every single day and put it in the mail. And he had, he had to go away for two years. He was faithful. Every day he wrote her a beautiful letter. And he came back two years later found she'd married the mailman. <laughs> Be careful what you put your eyes on. <laughs> Is my... my <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so. mm. Come on. Hey, in a few moments, we're going to put some of this in practice. I believe the Lord wants to touch people here. And we're going to lay hands on anybody and everybody who needs healing in this place today. But, but more than simply me praying and somebody receiving a touch from God, praise God, that, that is wonderful. I tell you, what the Lord wants is a bunch of people whose eyes are on him, who say, Lord, you are my healer. And it's wonderful to receive through somebody else's ministry, and that's valid and good. But Lord, I'm fixing my eyes on you. And then, you know, when we really begin to learn to receive consistently from God, that's when our faith begins to explode for other people. And I love praying for other people. I try and do it everywhere I go now. Yeah, I have an ambition to embarrass my friends. If I go in a restaurant, I'm like, who can I pray for? Yeah, you know, if I'm waiter or waitress serves me at a table, I'm like, do you need something? <laughs> and, uh, here's the thing though, the, the key to seeing other people healed is not to try and heal them, it's to relax. You can't heal anybody. Yeah, relax. I grew up in a church in the UK, we really tried to heal people. In the name of Jesus. People came forward with a cold and went back with serious neck injuries. <laughs> You know, people began to go bold in our church through so much prayer. (laughs) And I had to realize, the day came in my life where I realized so much of that was dead works. We, not by might, not by power, by my spirit. And we were trying to replace the by my spirit with our shouting and screaming and doing all sorts of things. Can I, 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 this is just my my tip. I've learned when when you pray for the sick, relax. Because you can't heal anybody. Without him, you can do nothing, but you're not without him. So just relax. I've learned when I ask somebody, what do you need prayer for? No matter what they say, the first word out of my mouth is, that's an easy one. Because they're all an easy one. Hallelujah for Jesus. I've learned not to get impressed with people's conditions. Yeah. But rather to look up. Like I said, when turn your eyes on Jesus, the things on earth grow strangely dim. The more we look at him, the smaller cancer seems to get. The more we look at him, COVID, are you kidding me? Boop. Come on, the more we look at him, everything else just grows dim in the light of his presence. And if we will fix our eye on him, come on, I'll finish with this today, but the key to getting transformed in the Christian life is not by hard work and self-discipline and self-help. We all beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are changed and transformed into that same image. There was a wonderful lady, my wife and I used to know her a little bit, called Ruth Heflin. And she wrote an amazing book called Glory. If you ever want to read a great book, read that book, Glory. She went to Glory about 20 years ago. but um, She used to say, you become like the one you worship. Let me say that again. You become like the one you worship. 
And there's something about seeing Jesus. The Bible says when we see him, we will be like him. Now that, that speaks of the end times eschatological when Jesus returns. When we fully see him, we'll be fully like him. But can I suggest to you, the more we see him today, the more we'll be like him today. The more I see Jesus, the more I'll be like him. The more I see Jesus, the more I can show Jesus to other people. Hallelujah. So I believe the Lord wants us to practice looking at him, to practice gazing at him and not be distracted, not look to the right or the left, look like, like a horse with, what do they call this thing? Blinders, blinkers. What are they called? Anybody know? Blinders. God wants to put Holy Spirit blinders, I think, on the church. Well, we're not, we're not distracted by every little to and fro and every silly argument going on in Washington or whatever, but we are, Lord, our eyes are on you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Hey, I want to do one more thing, and then we're, we're, let's do, move into some ministry here. But real quickly, I want to ask if there's anybody here who's never met Jesus. I want to ask if there's anybody here who needs to open their life and receive him in their life. I've been married for, gosh, I should be careful. <laughs> 21 years. <laughs> I'm just counting. Time flies. <laughs> and, uh, when I was married, I didn't enter into the marriage religion. Yeah? I, I received a person into my life. And to be a Christian, it's not about joining this church or that church. It's about opening your heart and entering into a relationship with a person. And I, I just want to ask real quick, is there anybody who's never done that? I'm not asking if you're a good person or a bad person. The Bible says we're all bad people. Jesus didn't come to turn bad people into good people. Jesus came to turn dead people into alive people. And if you're here today and you're not sure, I'm not saying are you Catholic, are you Protestant to this. I'm saying, do you know Jesus? Whom to know is life eternal. And if you don't, I believe that you can say yes to him right now. So could we just close our eyes, bow our heads for just a quick moment, if you will, today? Mm, thank you, Lord. Father, I ask that you'll walk around this room and show people Jesus. That you'll knock on the door of hearts that need you this day. And Lord, we believe you to change lives. You've already said yes to us. And if we will say yes to you, while meek hearts will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. So real quick, while nobody's looking around the room, if you want to pray with me today, if you want to say, Graham, I'm not sure that I know him, but I want to, if that's you right now, I just want to ask you to raise your hand up high while nobody's looking around. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, one last time. Anybody want to take that step today? Say, Jesus, come into my life. Change me. Again, if that's you, just slip your hand up so I can see that. We're not going to embarrass you. Mm, thank you, Lord. Well, that's wonderful. Maybe we've all done that here, but I just felt I should... Take a moment and ask. Thank you, Jesus. Here's what I'd like to do today. I, I want to spend a, a lot of time, if need be, and just pray and minister to everybody who needs a touch from God. How many people need a touch from God today? Three people. So, so in, in a moment, we're going to close the service, just release. If you need to run, feel free to, to be released. But if you need a touch from the Lord, the Lord is here. I believe this faith in this room to heal bodies right now. There's faith to mend broken bones, to heal organs that aren't functioning. There's faith in this room to open deaf ears and blind eyes in this room right now. Thank you, Jesus. Do we need to, is there anything else? Yeah, so Lord, I just thank you. I just speak life and blessing over this people today. Again, we just bless Pastor and Francine, Lord, as they're away. We just release people with your blessing and we believe you to do glorious things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So again, if you need a touch from the Lord, I invite you to come forward and we'll pray for you. Love you guys. Thank you for having me here today. Bless you.